Tonight, on Haunted Homes, we meet the Outram family from Birmingham, whose life is gripped by fear. I'm scared shitless. I can't stay up there, Helen. I can't. It's like something's just getting on my head and it's crushing it. We sent in a team of paranormal experts to investigate the ghostly goings on. Who's that? My heart's beating really hard. This is the source. Whatever's happening in this house, it's coming from here. But who or what will they discover? Something going on at home. There's no place like home. Except, of course, if you think yours is haunted. 49% of the population believe in the paranormal. But forget castles or stately piles. You don't have to live in a gothic mansion to have a ghost. 42% of Brits claim to have had personal encounters. Thousands of ordinary families all over the country are convinced they've had paranormal experiences in their own home. Hold tight, just now. Liz and Chris Outram have been together for 10 years. They have four children, Charlene 10, William 6, Christine 5, and three-year-old Christopher. And the guardians to Liz's 16-year-old niece, Kirsty. Two years ago, when they moved into their semi-detached house in Birmingham, they thought they'd found their perfect family home. Everything was fine. We did our all our unpacking and everything, and nothing was out of the ordinary. And then about three weeks later, we started hearing light footsteps. A few weeks later, I was standing at the bottom of the stairs and I heard a young babe cry. It sounded like a newborn baby. So I went upstairs. No, my son was fast asleep in the carts. And then we heard, like, a dragon. Still nothing there. Unable to account for the odd noises, Liz began to suspect their new house was haunted. One day I was in the bathroom. I felt like somebody was staring at me. I kept turning around to see if there was something there, thinking it was a cat or something. And I turned around and I saw what I thought was a shadow. And it actually went through the attic door. Well, that was it. I dropped everything I was doing in the bathroom and I went out the front door and I was sitting in the garden in tears when my husband came home. But Chris didn't take her fears seriously until one night a few weeks later, he heard footsteps on the hall stairs and there was no one there. I was sort of not believing at first, but uh, now I'm beginning to think otherwise. So now I'm actually starting to believe that they are... There are some activity. But it's not just strange noises that have frightened the family. It can go cold one minute, hot the next. You can get pictures coming off walls. I've seen lights in here. It can be very uncomfortable for me in here. The other night I was sitting in here, just watching the telly, and this actually flew to down here on the floor. It frightened the life out of me, so now I don't even sit in here on my own at night. If I'm going to be on my own, I'll go and sit in the garden. This is my niece's bedroom. Um, there is quite a lot of activity in this room. Um, toys on the chair will move, quilts pulled off. Um, in this room, the light turned on and off on its own quite a few times. You know, you just smell in here. I generally don't like being in here. You just see lights and you just hear a lot but there's nothing there. And when you're in the bath as well, you hear people knock on the door, you ask them what they want and there's nobody there and you can hear people outside the bathroom. But the one place in the house Liz is so scared of that she won't even set foot in is the attic. Footsteps, strange growling, bangs on the door and large objects being dragged have all been heard by the family. Liz is even terrified of walking past the doorway to the attic. After it flew open, hit her in the face. Liz, Chris and the children have experienced strange phenomena in nearly every room in the house. But it's the bedroom, stairs and attic that appear to be the hot spots. We are a normal family. Well, as normal a family as you can get who's got children. William, Charlene, I think it's time you went to bed, don't you? But it just ruins our life because 
The kids are complaining now that they're being disturbed in their sleep. So we're having trouble getting them to bed. Well, into bed now, please. Come on. How do you explain to a five and a six year old what's going on? You just say, well, go to, back to bed. You've had a bad nightmare or you've had a bad dream. Come on, please. Who's going to get him down? Well, please. Come on. What? What? But it's not just the kids who are suffering. It's become quite a strain on my marriage because if I have a bad night because I can feel the presence or I can hear the footsteps, I mean, he has to get up, he has to make me drinks, I won't come downstairs on my own, I won't go to the toilet at night on my own, he has to come in with me. He has to literally be there 24-7. I would love my old wife back because um, she's more of a strong character. But now, with this happening, I've got a completely different wife. It's not the same when I'm married. She's more timid, scared, um, frightened. It's not the same one. We gave Liz and Chris a camcorder for a week in an attempt to capture some of the noises and moving objects they have been experiencing. I feel sick because I don't feel I'm scared shitless. I've got a tightening in my stomach, like I've just been on a fair ride, yeah. Whilst they recorded no concrete evidence of any paranormal activity, they did capture some footage of unexplained moving lights. Some investigators believe such lights, known as orbs, represent spirit energies. I've got a fucking light show here. Could these lights be proof that the Outrams are being haunted? I mean, all I want to know is who it is and what do they want. Maybe they've got a connection here, maybe they belong here, but we need to know what they want because it's just getting too much now. I just want it over and done with it and I just want whoever it is or whatever it is to go to where it should be. You know, and let us, if they've had their life, can we have ours? The Altrum family are desperate to find out what or who they think is haunting their house. To help them discover what's going on, we're sending in three very different experts. A psychic, a paranormal investigator, and a professor of paranormal psychology. The team are experienced to tackle any home believed to be haunted. Mia Dolan is one of the UK's best known psychics. Her book, The Gift, is an international bestseller, and she has over 21 years' experience in the paranormal. The list is endless of the paranormal problems in a haunted home. Anything to do with electricity, anything to do with temperature, anything to do with smells, sounds. We can go from the slightest thing, which is a draft of cold air, to a full manifestation at the end of the bed. Mia is regularly called out to private homes that the owners believe are haunted. It amazes me when people say they're going to go ghost hunting, so they go to the nearest, oldest building, like the, an abbey or a castle or a manor house. And yet most of my heaviest experiences have been involved in ordinary homes with ordinary people who are terrified. It doesn't matter the size or the price of your property. It is the land it is sitting on and the events that have gone on within that property. David V has been an independent investigator into the paranormal for over 17 years. He runs Ghost UK and researches and documents activity in suspected haunted homes all over the country. I actually take the more scientific approach when investigating ghosts. We don't go running after these spectral apparitions. We don't capture them. Um, we don't rid them. We scientifically evaluate the existence of ghosts. We've had a lot of activity in this room. We heard footsteps running across the floorboards. During his investigations, David claims to have witnessed some unbelievable ghost hauntings. Over the course of 30 years that I've been investigating, I've probably got um, 100 photographs with genuine ghostly phenomenon caught on film. Professor Chris French is a world-renowned psychologist and author specialising in the psychology of paranormal beliefs and experiences. As the editor of The Skeptic magazine, Chris believes ghosts exist in people's minds. 
Skepticism isn't about dismissing the possibility that something paranormal might be going on. It's about saying, show me the evidence, convince me. And so far, I've never come across any evidence that has actually convinced me. When Chris visits homes suspected of hauntings, he looks for any obvious signs of hoaxing or natural explanations to noises in the house. These would be the stairs when you were lying in bed, you actually heard footsteps. The, the coming heavy up these footsteps, stairs. yeah. Right. Um, some of them do squeak a little bit. Once you've got the idea that your house is haunted, then virtually anything that happens, no matter how relatively mundane, is interpreted in terms of it's the ghost. I don't think that anybody that's looked into these kinds of issues seriously doubts that people have had weird experiences. Where the disagreement comes is how you interpret those experiences. None of our experts have met or had any contact with the Artram family. They have no idea where they live and don't even know their names. Mia Dolan is a professional psychic with over 15 years experience in the paranormal. This is the first time she has seen Liz and Chris's house. She has no idea who lives here and has never met the family. Thank you for letting me come to your home. If it's all right for you, I'd like to be able to look around and judge for myself what's here. Because I don't want your energies interfering with whatever's in the rooms, if that's OK with you. Yeah, because fine. people think they just have a haunting. Yeah. But they come in many shapes and sizes. Right. So before we do anything, we'd better find out what we've got. In each room, Mia claims she is able to get an understanding on how best to deal with the situation. This is really interesting definitely got the feeling of something coming up and down the corridor. It's like banging, maybe banging over on this court, on this door or banging on a wall. And it's, it's mischievous. It, it's, it's definitely an adult, it's not a child. But we've got activity here, so that's quite interesting for me. The family have all reported hearing footsteps and banging on numerous occasions in the hallway. I get a feeling I'm going to go up, but I'm not sure yet why. So... Anything that's happening is not centred in this hallway, but um, I am drawn to the bedrooms. It looks like the cat wants to get out. Mia is already picking up on what the family claim they've had to live with. This room's unhappy, even though it's a children's room, it's unhappy. And I'm sure the children would have said something's woken them up, they're hearing noises. It's not a very nice room for a children's room. It's a good job we're here. Each of the four children, plus Liz's niece Kirsty, have all slept in this room over the past two years. All except three-year-old Christopher have reported being woken in the night. I don't think anyone could stay here a week without getting depressed. And I do feel sorry for the family, and I don't know how long they've been trying to get it sorted out, but this is not new. It's been going on for a long time. Mia has correctly identified that the Outrams have complained of this problem for over two years. For Liz and Chris, Mia's arrival is a mixed blessing. Well, it's getting to the stage where I don't think anybody believes us what's going on, to be honest, anybody that's been here. But I am worried that whatever is here could be stirred up and get worse. That's the only thing I'm worried about. While Mia is making her way around the house, something odd occurs. There's a noise up there. An alarm has suddenly started to go off in the attic. There's something going on at home. As the crew investigate, Liz and Chris are completely oblivious to the drama unfolding upstairs. Get the light on, Steve. Stop. Stopped. Oh, that's weird. No one can explain why the alarm was suddenly activated or where it came from. And as Mia arrives in the attic, she senses a bad atmosphere in the room. This is where it's coming from. This is the source of whatever's happening in this house. It's coming from here. And it, it doesn't feel nice. It's very rare to find anything evil on Earth. Very rare. And I wouldn't say this is evil. Not yet, anyway. 
After her tour of the house, Mia tells the family what she's discovered. Liz's reaction to the news is completely unexpected. The actual problem is stemming from upstairs. That's where the centre of it is. But it is in every room. I do think you've got a haunting. I do think we can sort it out. But Liz, it's been affecting you, your nerves. You've been depressed. And there's something from your childhood that you're bringing through now. It was an old man who's now in spirit. No, I can't. I can't. <laughs> Sorry, <darling. laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Listen, darling, I didn't mean to upset her, but if we can sort it out, then it'll be finished. I didn't know she could pick it up that quick. Good. Yeah. Okay. She's a bit of a shock, because nobody's mentioned him for a long time. She said if you want to have a word to run around, you can. I just honestly didn't think it would pick it up that quick. Liz thinks Mia is talking about her dad, who died ten years ago and with whom she had a strained relationship. But Mia doesn't believe he's the ghost. She suspects it's something else preying on Liz's bad memories. Often people don't want to think backwards. They don't want to go into their past and relive things. So they put them in the back of their memory and forget about them. But it's still a way of clinging on. No, it's the fact that she picked up on that. I knew then she was, she's a fraud. Do you know what I mean? Mm. As soon as she said she's picked up on an old man, I thought, here we go, straight away. I am so sorry to hit it long on you like that. I didn't mean to. No, don't worry. And it's, um, but it's just obvious. I know. I promise it's going to be a lot better. I, I promise. So. Once the house gets cleared, we will clear it. I will not leave this house until it's cleared. And when it's cleared, it's like a fresh slate. And there'll be no more things that you can't speak about. It'll be fine. The house will now be taken over by the experts for the next 48 hours. The aim of the first night is to witness and record any ghostly activity with the help of independent paranormal investigator David V and his assistant Mark Webb. David runs an organization which investigates reported haunted homes. David and Mark will set up audio-visual equipment in the exact locations where the Outrams say they've experienced the most paranormal phenomena in an attempt to capture it on film. This is where we get a lot of the activity. Um, I normally have all the lights on when we're here. The lights gone again. That was a new bulb last night. I am getting a reading of uh, one middle gauze, which is quite interesting, but that could be natural. Electricity the equipment the investigators are using looks for disruptions in electromagnetic fields. They believe high EMF readings are indicative of spirit activity, but these readings could also be caused by faulty electrics or proximity to power lines. Um, I'll show you to my children's bedroom, but this, this area is one of the main parts that we get activity in. Um, the lights are fused and everything you have, footsteps, a lot of stuff happens on this part. Well, we're certainly getting a reading. This is going absolutely bananas. David is surprised by the sustained high readings he's picking up throughout the house. That's pretty amazing. Okay. Considering that every electrical light has been redone. But I'd like to see this meter really, really go up which would uh, show me some significant sort of paranormal phenomenon. Wait till later on tonight. Okay, the day. well, I look forward to that. <laughs> Rather you than me. There's been quite a bit of activity here. Not nothing major, that anything's been flying or anything, but I'll come in and I'll go to bed and it's like somebody is sitting on the bed and I thought last night my husband was actually shaking the bed. And it turns out I found out this afternoon it wasn't him doing it. I thought it was him doing it. Right. OK, and you weren't dreaming this at all? No, yeah. I was you sitting up wide awake. awake. I was... Very conscious. Yeah, okay. I was reading a book. All right, well, I must admit, we're having some unusual readings, um, the likes of which I've never seen before in one continuous sweep. 
and um, it's possible that there could be some paranormal phenomenon going on in this house. Mir thinks the attic is the center of the paranormal activity. Liz has been too terrified to set foot in it since the locked door flew open and smashed into her face. To aid the investigation, she's determined to try and overcome her fear. But just two steps in is too much for Liz. I can't stay up there, Helen. I can't. Just as Liz feels overcome by feelings of dread and has to leave the attic, David's meter readings suddenly peak, and he thinks he catches sight of movement out of the corner of his eye. I'm very definite that something moved in this room. Something made a noise. Something slid across the floor. I went into the attic because I wanted to beat my fear. Mm. And I just felt so sick. Sick headache. Yeah. Mm. It's like something's just getting on my head and it's crushing it. Mm. This is staying exactly the same strength all the time. And it's, it's quite odd. I've never seen it do this before. It's like I was being pushed against the wall. Cause Mark, Mark went past hey, me. Did you want to fire in? Did it, uh, no, box? I was standing on the stairs. And... I am concerned about this meter sorry, reading. Sorry I've sorry never seen anything like this before, ever. Now, something did move up here. I'm very, very sure of that. Only by knowing how bad it feels could you see how good it feels when you look up there. I hope so, I really do. I can't go on living like this. One of the investigators, Mark, has also reported a strange experience in the attic. As soon as I was walking up those stairs, it just felt very lightheaded. It may be the actual stairs themselves. They might be where this is steep. That I'm obviously the, the uh, slightly the, off balance. Yeah, so the rise up made me uh, yeah very disorientated. It seemed like something was saying, "Come back. I haven't I'm finished here. showing you what I can yes. do." I think the sooner we actually implement some of those scientific um, experiments, the better. The investigators believe the high readings could be a sign of paranormal activity. David is setting up a mini-disc player in the attic, which he hopes will capture electronic voice phenomena known as EVP. It's been reported that sometimes when these discs are analysed, strange whispers or voices inaudible to the human ear can be picked up. Some attribute these voices to spirits. OK, what we're going to do now is we're going to set up a pair of infrared motion detectors. Basically... We put the two, so the two beams meet each other, and if anything breaks that beam, it will set off an alarm, like so. Okay. The family have reported toys moving in the bedrooms, so the investigators are setting up trigger objects and using cameras to capture any movement. With the paranormal tracking equipment in place, Professor Chris French arrives. He specialises in paranormal psychology and is a non-believer. He will always look for the rational explanation for things that go bump in the night. OK, Liz, could you tell me all the things that have happened that have convinced you that you live in a haunted house? Well, for starters, footsteps when the children are in... Well, the kids are fast asleep in bed. A heavy box or a trunk being dragged downstairs. Pictures thrown off the wall for no reason. Um, seeing lights go across my floor. It's a matter of a lot of stuff going on. Has anyone actually seen any objects as they've been actually moving? Um, my wife has seen pictures moving. But I haven't actually seen them yet. Do you think that any of these incidents could have ordinary explanations? I have tried everything. Um, from the time that I saw the lights on the floor, I've said, check to see if it was dust. And when I've heard the noises, I've checked to see if it was the children. I've tried to find a normal explanation for everything that's going on in the house, and I can't. Is there anybody who's on any kind of medication that might lead them to kind of see things or hear things that are not actually really there? No, no depression, no, no. Right, OK. Whilst one of the investigators, David, makes final equipment checks, he believes he's witnessed something weird in the children's bedroom. I was standing here observing this area when all of a sudden a little child's toy flew from this doll's house, hit this infrared sensor beam and fell right smack in the middle of the floor. And as you can see, it was just laying there. 
now, which is quite amazing. No one threw that. There's no one inside this room. David believes the toy was thrown in a straight line to land directly in the sensor beam. He thinks this strongly suggests the Outrams have been living with a poltergeist. Tonight's investigation will begin at midnight, and disturbed by the goings-on in the house, Mia asks the Outrams to leave. At 11 p.m., Chris French checks and records the temperature of each room. Just looking for uh, any sudden temperature changes. So far, everything's very stable. Paranormal enthusiasts believe a sudden temperature change is a sign of ghostly activity. 24.4 degrees centigrade. Mia is convinced that the spirit trapped in the Outram's home is a bad one. She believes the investigation team and crew could be at risk if they don't take proper steps to protect themselves. OK, now we're here and it's just gone midnight. And it doesn't matter to me if you don't believe in ghosts at this moment. And it doesn't matter to me if you believe in good and evil. But what does matter is that sometime during the night you could become scared. If you feel things and you see things that you cannot explain, you must believe it is happening. And with that belief comes choice, and the choice is between good and bad. And I want you to choose good. It's good, it'd be a good night, and it's interesting, but it's not a game. As the investigation begins, the crew base themselves in three of the bedrooms, the hallway and the attic, aiming to record any unusual occurrences. Keeping the camera rolling is obviously crucial to the experiment. Each hour, they will rotate positions. The aim of tonight is to discover what lies behind the Outram's experiences. Mir believes it's the ghost of an old man, unconnected to the family. In my um, work as a clearer specialist, I've been doing it, say, about 17 years. And in all those years, only three times have I felt something as heavy as this. According to ghost hunters, spirits are most active during the hours of 12 to 3 a.m. The team, positioned at points around the house, wait for the unexpected to surprise them. For the first hour and a half, nothing extraordinary happens. Then two crew members sat in the attic begin to experience strange sensations. My heart's beating really hard. It's like there's a pressure drop. Do you feel that? Hmm. There's a pressure drop in Can you feel it in your ears? Yeah. Hmm, it's weird that, isn't it? I've been in an aeroplane. I know, I've seen this before. It's like it's like a pressure drop, like your ears. Hmm. I can feel it in my arms, legs. You know, when you take off and they feel yeah. slightly constricted. That's really weird. It's like, like, this, like a, I really feel it in my ears. There doesn't appear to be a logical explanation as to why their ears popped simultaneously. It's not a symptom typically associated with panic or feelings of anxiety. Skeptic Chris French is on hand throughout the night to evaluate any occurrence. I don't know. I'm really interested. They said that they're picking up all kinds of uh, variations in the EMF, right. you know, and it might be that that could actually cause some kind of subjective sensation as well. Right. Mm. And it's interesting you both felt it at the same time. Yeah, it was yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've been. It's 2.20 a.m. One of the investigators has noticed something ominous happening in the attic. It's a little bit cold up here. There's a drop in temperature. But that's quite interesting. The temperature has actually risen. It's 24.7 degrees centigrade. 24.8. 
Uh, 24.9, 25 degrees centigrade. That's quite a significant jump. 25.1. So although it's very, very cold in here, the temperature is actually rising. 25.3. 0.4. Five. Extraordinary. It is very normal to get temperature changes in haunted houses. Spirit are energy, and when their energy comes near you, it's like static, and that static can make things colder or hotter. The speed of the changes is actually a sign that it is more paranormal than normal, because normal changes are gradual. That is bizarre. 27.1 degrees centigrade and it is absolutely freezing in this room and it's still rising it's, it's now actually stopped at 30.5 degrees centigrade that's an incredible six degrees increase in under two minutes Chris French's earlier temperature recordings have been a constant 24.5 degrees temperature is now falling Falling, it's it? falling quite rapidly now. But it seems, so, hotter, seems hotter in here. It is hotter in here, isn't it? Very odd indeed. Where's the sensor though? It's not too sensor, close to your body. No, no, the, here's the sensor here. They're just floating there. It's just floating, yes, yeah, so it's nowhere near my hands. Is this temperature change a sign that an apparition could be forming? While everyone is sitting waiting, the executive producer thinks she's seen something in one of the children's bedrooms. Oh, I can see shadows. What's my sound? I can see shadows. Maybe it's blue. I could, I could, I could definitely see shadows against the blue. No way. Uh, honestly. Who's the shadow? Yeah. What sort of shadow? Sort of shadow? Just like about so high up. Mm. That's creepy. Because there's definitely no one in there. I'm not tired. But, but the infrared's in there, it hasn't gone off. Yeah, that's been really Honestly, I'm gonna make it up. I did see it. And you thought we were that's in there? Freaky, yeah. I don't know. Oh, like come on. Know which room you were in? The assistant producer and director investigate. I'm too rubbish. Right <laughs> If there was something there, it's now gone. It's 20 to 4 in the morning, and Mark discovers a possible explanation for the shadow seen in the children's bedroom. But it's not as straightforward as it seems. There was a teddy bear sat on this exercise bike. There was, this one was on the floor down here as it is. Uh, if I move this one, because this one we don't believe's moved, this teddy bear was sat on this exercise bike, just like that. As you can see, it's not really going to move. I mean, even, and I'm quite a heavy chap, that teddy bear has not moved a centimetre. This teddy bear is now led here on the floor. Unfortunately, we had no camera locked off in here. If we had it done, I think we would have uh, seen some sort of activity moving that teddy bear. Damn. <laughs> trap cameras have been running for over four hours when two of the crew independently report seeing something out of the corner of their eye. Who's that? Oh, I just saw it. something. I just it was saw very something weird. out the corner Both of my of us eye kept going something. under like that, that. And I was standing here, Steve was sat there, and talking. he saw the same thing. It was out of the corner of my eye. Now, I don't know if it's just our eyes playing tricks on us or what, but I see we both, I did see some, some movement some under movement there. there. 
And, and I said, and, I just saw something out of my mouth. He said the same. I mean, we didn't feed each other, did, did anybody we? have torches on or anything like this? No. no. Like, any light no. sources at all? No. 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 Was, it was apart from that light. Light. Apart from that light. You know, it might have been, for example, mm. plucking something out of the air. I mean, it might have been a car going past and headlights. You know, yeah, you, but it looked like under that. But I mean, it might have just produced that kind of, you know, if, if, yeah. the, if the light was right. kind of running across yeah, it. Yeah, fair enough. As, as a, as, you know, could, that could no be. No idea. I mean, I, you know, that's not, you know, I'm not saying for one minute that's anything like a definitive explanation, but something like that, where you're not paying any attention to what the, the cause is mm. of the right, light or the source. Exactly. As day breaks and the investigation ends, Mia is concerned by what she thinks is in the house. I don't want the family here to know how I feel, really, about what's here. Because if they knew how heavy I think it is, then even once I've cleared it, they'll still be nervous. So by not giving them all the information, they won't be left with any nightmares. While the investigation team didn't record any evidence of hauntings on camera, everyone felt and witnessed strange sensations during the night including severe temperature changes, shadow sightings, and unusual pressure drops in the attic, none of which can be explained absolutely. It's night two of the 48-hour investigation. At midnight, Mia will perform her clearing ceremony and attempt to banish what she believes to be the ghostly presence for good. Chris and Liz return home to hear our experts' theories about what they've been experiencing. This is the first time they've been in the house since the investigation began. You ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready, I think. Ready? Well, listen, Chris, as you know, we took over your house last night. Lots of people experienced different things. I, some felt sick, some felt hot, some felt cold with different things going on. It was very interesting to say the least. It was amazing from a scientific point of view. We had some amazing uh, EMF meter readings. Um, quite unheard of at that level within a house of this size. Um, normally we'd associate that with man-made electrical um, emissions, but very, very rare for something like this. I guess I should come in at that point, because as, as the sceptic here, you know, mm. I wasn't at all convinced last night that anything paranormal was going on. We had people getting very excited over what seemed to me to be often things that didn't merit that degree of excitement. Um, I also think it's, from my point of view, very interesting that with the equipment that Dave was using, I was actually, at some point, be able to say, can you put it there, can you test it there, and it would go off. All I had to go on was my sense, you know. There was nothing else I could go on. And it wasn't going off anywhere else in the room until he put it in that area. But again, what might be happening there is, I mean, you know, there's, it's quite possible that you might be able to pick up on the same kind of fluctuations that no, David's equipment is recording, but that, again, doesn't necessarily show that there's anything paranormal going on. It just shows that there are certain environmental differences that perhaps you're picking up on. Oh, so then we'd have to agree that I'm picking up on something. You might be. You might be. I mean, and, there's, and there is evidence to suggest that when you take people around supposedly haunted locations, that those areas where people report actually getting chills down the spine or a sense of presence and so on are those where you get these... Well, we could, we, we could look at sort of... It doesn't show in itself that there's necessarily anything happening. I think what we're all agreed on is that there's something going on. What we're not agreed on is what it is. What it is, absolutely. For the last two years, the Outram family have been living at the mercy of the unusual activity in their home. Tonight, Mia will perform what she calls a clearing ceremony. But she believes it's not without risk. It's only when it really doesn't want to go, you've got problems, and it's a battle of wills. It's a battle of not losing concentration, believing in yourself, and never, ever getting scared. Mir believes the attic is the heart of the spirit activity. This is where the clearing will take place, and it's the first time Liz has been up there for six months. I'm looking forward to trying getting rid of whatever it is but I'm nervous of what we'll possibly see tonight or what we're here. Hi, come on in. Don't be intimidated by the candles. There's a good reason for it. When you're dealing with spirit, 
that any energy can interrupt them. Electricity is the same sort of thing. So we try to minimise as much electricity as possible. Mir is about to attempt communication with the spirit and identify why it's been haunting the Outram family. It is a guy, it's a man, it's an older man, but it's not to do with the family, okay? And this man has been associated with this area for a long time. Now, it's negative, but it's not evil. And I'm also getting this area as if it was open land and there's water and like a stone chapel or a stone building. So this is obviously a long time ago. And I think there may have been a hanging place around here. Now, this man, when he was alive, was in charge. He was in charge of people. That was his job. And for some reason, he wouldn't leave it when he left. And so while he's stuck here, he's been trying to order people about or get them to be noticed, get them to do what he wants them to do. But it's not any particular person he's after. But you are very sensitive, Liz, and so it's, you've been feeling it stronger. This is interesting because now I'm opened up fully. I'm seeing children's stuff being moved, like children's toys being moved, and drawings on the wall that there's been arguments about. And it's sorry. Okay, sorry about that. Nobody believed anybody here. Okay, I'm going to start clearing. What I'm doing now is I'm opening wide up and pulling it into the room. And now my guide, Eric's here, and this is very bizarre for you to understand, but my guide takes the person over. I act as an actual anchor for it. Okay, it's got it in the room. The, the spirit of the man is over here and now starting to walk as if the candles aren't here, starting to move towards this side where Eric is. How did you feel when I said to you that it's coming down here? I could feel it. Yeah, because it's right by you. <laughs> I didn't want to freak you out. That's why my hands took to my face. I feel it's a bit past. <sighs> what was he yeah. saying about the children's toys? The worst children's toys in the attic, they've been moved. And what about the drawing on the wall? <laughs> when my sister's kids were living here, um, they kept blaming each other for the drawing on the wall. And the, there was arguments, there was fights over it. It was in the children's bedroom. We had to paint over it, didn't we? Yeah. Mia also felt no, the spirit had some link to a nearby hanging place. There's a road not far from here known as the Tyburn Road. And that was supposed to be notorious years ago as a hanging road. Oh, was it? Yeah. How are you feeling? Relieved. It, it sounds like I don't feel that uncomfortable in here now. No, it's, it's changed. Yeah. It's, it takes a couple of minutes as it changes over. But the, it, to me, it feels softer in here. The headache's going as well. <laughs> Finished. It's over. It's going to take me a bit of time to get used to. Mia claimed the area where the Outrams live used to be fields and that there was a stone chapel nearby. On further investigation, we discovered it did used to be open land. We found no record of a stone chapel, but we did learn that in the 18th century, the area was the centre for Birmingham's Catholic community. With the clearing over, Mia hopes the family can now move forward with their lives. There is no presence left in that house. As long as they don't, shall we say, frighten each other, <laughs> they'll be fine now. For sceptic Chris French, there never was a presence in the house. I've seen nothing, I've heard nothing, and none of the things that have happened to anybody have struck me as being so impressive that you think, my God, maybe there really is a ghost here. I think they've all got perfectly ordinary, I'm afraid, rather boring explanations. The independent investigator's high meter readings have caused a difference of opinion. I did at first think they had a poltergeist manifestation, but on reflection, I think it could be down to natural environments. There have been a few activities in the house 
which can be scientifically explained, but there's also been a few which I don't personally feel can have been attributed to science or natural occurrence. There, there's, I would suggest that there is something in this house. With each of our experts coming to a different conclusion, we return to the Outram family home two weeks later to see if their strange occurrences have gone. I didn't know what I was going to feel. And that night that she did the clearing, I could actually feel the spirit pass me on my hand. And I thought, no, I'm not frightened anymore. I know it's gone. But it's such a change. The house is so uplifting now. It's a happier place to be. And they've reported no more unexplained noises haunting them day and night. I don't know what we were expecting to happen, but when we 